From all of us here at Heart Matters, we want to wish every mom out there a very happy Mother's Day. And we hope that each mother can understand how incredibly important they are. We have a special show lined up today where we'll hear from a variety of mothers all in different seasons of motherhood. We're also thrilled to have special guest, Pastor C.N. Heath, sharing some thoughts in this week's To The Point segment. And finally, we want to welcome Noah Hamilton to the stage as today's musical guest. We are so glad that you could join us here today. Enjoy the show. Terry's Tents, custom canvases, framing, embroidery, printing, craft supplies, fabrics, leathers, and furs. Located in Happy Valley, Goose Bay. to tractor trailer loads. Dooley's Trucking caters to all your shipping needs. Capable of meeting all your shipping requirements throughout Newfoundland. Dooley's Trucking is your choice for fast and efficient delivery. Ship with the best, ship Dooley's. My name is Brandon, I'm the owner here at Gander Appliance and Furniture. We sell a wide variety of appliances and furniture, including um, Canadian-made Decarest, Ashley Furniture, Samsung, as well as Whirlpool. Please visit us at 292 Airport Boulevard here in Gander. Also visit us at our location in Lewisport at 1 Fairview Street. Megan Canning. I'm 29 years old uh, and I'm a new mom. Robert and I have been married for six years now and uh, our son was born in September. Robert and I had decided maybe around two years ago that we we had the desire to start growing our family so I remember lying in bed one night and I had planned on taking 
a pregnancy test the next morning and I was lying in bed just so anxious and uh, when 2 a.m. came I was still awake and I said this is it I just I've got to get up so I got up and I took the test and it was positive we were both so excited uh, so of course then then the planning started it was it was real and you know we were thinking nine months from now uh, we're gonna have a baby and it really it really started to to hit home I went into labor three days after my due date um, and actually everything went really smoothly for the first 12 hours or so and then it came time to push and that's when things started to go downhill a little bit um, so after pushing for several hours the baby just was not in the right position to come uh, the baby was in distress his heart rate started dropping and the decision was made to do uh, an emergency c-section my sister-in-law took him and she held him next to my face and I started talking to him and uh, he stopped crying. It's like, it's like he knew my voice already. And that was a really special moment. I talked to him for probably 10 minutes and he just looked at me and listened. And I told him, you know, how much he was loved and how he'd waited for him. Eight pounds, 12 ounces. He was perfectly healthy. Um, and he did great. He was he was a trooper. And maybe f six hours after uh, my C-section, I I started going downhill. I received um, multiple blood transfusions very quickly, and uh, I was taken in for a second surgery. So thankfully, the second surgery went well, and um, I was able to get back to my room and enjoy the baby. Um, you know, it was, it was a long recovery after that. After five days in the hospital, uh, we were able to bring the baby home. And um, even though I wasn't feeling great, that was, that was still a really good day. My mom stayed with us every night in the hospital. And she stayed with us for three weeks after the baby was born. And I really needed that. My mom has been a big influence in my life for as long as I can remember. She's a, a wonderful woman of faith and she has taught me to trust in God at all times. Uh, I'm still learning from her every day. My name is Lynette Butt. I live in Gander, Newfoundland, where I was born and raised, actually. In 1974, I married my husband, Clayton. We spent most of our lives in full-time ministry with the Pentecostal Assemblies of Newfoundland. We have four daughters. Our oldest, Laura Lee, is living in Kansas. She's married, and uh, they have four children, Joel, and Isaac and Ava and Luke, ranging from 14 down to five. Melanie is our second. She's living in the Halifax Dartmouth area. Natalie is our third daughter. She's living in the CBS area. She's married to Chris. They have two little boys. Hunter is four and Elliot is seven months. And our youngest, Allison, is living here in Gander. She has Eli, who's three, and expecting her second baby in June. March 29th, 1977, I first became a mom and this little bundle was laid in my arms, four pounds, 13 and a half ounces, just, what do I do? Like, where do I turn? And, but immediately there was a love that was birthed in my heart. There's nothing to compare it to. It sort of gave me a, a feeling of just how much God loved me, because I loved this little child so much. When Laura Lee was about 10 months of age, we knew there was something not quite right couldn't place her finger on it, but we knew there was something. When she was two, she was diagnosed as being severe to profoundly deaf, and that same day we were told she'd probably never talk and probably never be able to be educated. We went home and we got made contacts with the school for the deaf, and uh, for the next three years we just enjoyed her. Then when she turned five, we had to make a decision. At the time, we were living in Burlington, Newfoundland, on the Bay River Peninsula, about seven to eight hours from St. John's. And we had to make a decision, are we going to keep this little girl in our own little circle? And as you can see to this day, it still brings emotion to me. Came home from Sunday school one Sunday afternoon, and the Sunday school paper always read that the afternoon between Sunday school and church. And the story this afternoon was about a mom who had a deaf child and she struggled with exactly the same thoughts that I struggled with, that I was struggling with at that moment. And she did 
the right thing. She made sure her child received as much of an education as was humanly possible. And the child grew, married, and the child and the husband became missionaries to the death in South America. I can honestly say from that day to this day, I have never once questioned God as to why my daughter was deaf. Struggles, yes, but I never ever questioned again. And Laura Lee grew up, went to school, and graduated from Gallaudet University for the Deaf in Washington, D.C. with a master's in deaf education. It's just amazing, and only God. Hi, I'm Alyssa, and I'm 34 years old. I got married when I was 21 years old and was thrown into parenthood 11 months after that when our first son was born. When he was almost four years old, we were given our second child, Hannah, only to find out when she was almost six years old that we were gonna be thrown back into it again and have another baby when my kids would be six and a half and 10 years old. To say throwing is exactly how it felt the first time and exactly how it felt the third time <laughs> 10 years later. When Isaac was 18 months old, my mother got really sick all of a sudden and passed away very unexpectedly. And for a large portion of the past 10 years, that's been the continuing story. Just get through the day and pretend certain things have never happened. It was all just processes. What did I have to do today so that tomorrow was gonna also get done? I remember calling mom every day throughout my pregnancy and every day after he was born until he was 18 months old when she passed away. It was easy to lose sight of some of the things that were most important when all you wanted to do was call your mom and ask for advice. When Isaac was four, we welcomed our second child into the world, Hannah. We used to joke around that Hannah was our little lemon, even though we knew she was the best lemon there was. She was on antibiotics from the two weeks before she was a year old, which would have been in December until the following July. Just ear, ear infection after ear infection, and she didn't walk until she was 20 months old. Having a third baby after my first two were somewhat self-reliant and both in school was quite an undertaking. At times, it could only feel like drowning. The difference this time was undoubtedly the fact that I had allowed myself to depend on others and not do motherhood on my own. Even just like a quick text or something short can just send calm in some of the most chaotic moments. A few years ago, still had the two younger girls were still at home. The older two had already left. And there was a jingle, an advertisement on the television, and I don't even remember what it was advertising, but I remember the jingle was setting the tone. And those three words just got into my spirit. And that day I remember going, hurry up, get up. Come on, what are you wearing that collar for? Well, you need to comb your hair. That doesn't match, and hurry up. No, you don't have time to eat breakfast. Go to the bus, that sort of thing. And I snapped at them as they were going to school. They left the house in tears. They came home that afternoon in tears. The next morning, when they came upstairs, oh, you look gorgeous today. Oh, your hair is so nice, and oh, your color. You matched your color and fit so, so well, and all that, and prayed with them at the doors. They went to the bus stop and so on. And uh, that day, they left with a smile. They came home with a smile. And I realized a mother sets the tone in her family. More so than anyone else, a mother is the one who sets the tone. It was just four weeks after he was born and um, I was still recovering. I still wasn't feeling well. And I told Robert, you know, let, let's bring him to church. I really wanted to bring him to his first service. And, you know, he said, are you sure? Are you sure you're feeling up to it? And it was so uplifting to just go and uh, be there and be surrounded by our church family. Um, I can't wait to bring him to Sunday school and um, watch him learn about God and grow in his faith. It's easy to think about what the best things of being a mother are. To watch Isaac make a great play at home plate, to 
to watch Hannah sing in her first solo, to watch Leah splash in a puddle. Those are the things I've learned from my mother. I remember her telling stories over and over of when we rode our bike for the first time or when we learned to swim or how excited we were when we would score a goal at hockey. She had said to me before she died that always remember the small things now because you'll realize later in life that those are actually the big things. Once they married and left home, Lorley is down in Kansas. We see her once a year, her and the children and her husband once a year for maybe two, three weeks, that's it. I wish they were closer. You just pray for them. You raise them as much as well as you can and let God look after the rest. You know, sometimes we worry about him. We worry that he's gonna get sick or hurt. Robert and I have often said, you know, how, how do people do this without God? Because, you know, that's, that's who we always turn to. And whenever we have questions or worries, you know, we just say, God will take care of us because he, he always has. I thought mom relied on herself for everything, that she was a strong, independent woman who raised five children, but it was God that she was relying on in all the situations. And it's easier now as a mother to bring that over into my life after seeing how, how much it changed her and how much it factored into how she raised us. Raising little lives is very challenging, but yet very joyful. It hasn't really struck me that, you know, this Mother's Day, I'm, I'm celebrating being a mother. It's the greatest blessing, and it's a pretty special thing. When you think of it, what's really important in life, if your child loves God and loves others, then that's a win. And not only the importance of it, but how rewarding it can be if you actually let God take over all the hard bits of life. I've done a lot of things in my life, and my, ch my girls are all well accomplished, teacher, meteorologist, pharmacist, and fashion party. They've all done something great. But being a mom is the highest calling, and I just thank God that he allowed me, gave me the privilege of being a mom and calling me to the highest calling that there could ever be. Still to come on today's show. To the point with C.N. Heath. And more music from Noah Hamilton when Heart Matters returns. White's Family Care is proudly known as Newfoundland's finest personal care home. We take pride in our home cooked meals, giving you a choice of what you want to eat. We bring you to all your medical appointments, shopping outings, even coffee and ice cream trips. Our staff treat you like family as you overlook the beautiful Bay of Exploits. White's Family Care is the place to be. Scott's Transport Limited is a family-owned and operated full transportation company located in beautiful Deer Lake. In business for over 25 years and with a fleet of modern equipment and dedicated team, we service the growing needs of businesses from Newfoundland and Labrador to Ontario and locations in between. If it matters to you, it matters to us. It's been said that motherhood is a lifetime adventure, the hardest but most rewarding, non-paying, 24-hour job you will ever do. Maybe today causes you to think about your own mother, the sacrifices she made and the love she gave as she raised you. Maybe it causes you to think about your own motherhood, of all the joy, the love, mixed with all the fears, the failures, frustrations, and exhaustion, all wrapped up in one. Mothers play a unique and crucial role in the lives of their children. And as we have heard from our stories today, they play an ongoing role through all the struggles and stages of life. Today, we celebrate the gift of motherhood and all of the special moms that we have or had in our lives. Mother's Day may look a little different this year. Maybe social distancing has really changed what your celebrations look like today. I'm reminded of another Mother's Day that I spent social distancing for different reasons. 
Six years ago, I spent Mother's Day celebrating with my family, with my children, with my own mom and my grandmother. But I wasn't allowed out in public. We had to celebrate at home. I was battling leukemia and awaiting a bone marrow transplant that would take place just a few days after that Mother's Day. I remember battling so many overwhelming thoughts about what the future would hold. And the mother's heart in me was absolutely wrenched. Life can throw us some painful and unexpected curveballs sometimes. You've probably heard the saying, you can't control the hand you're dealt, just how you play it. Maybe the hand you've been dealt includes motherhood. Maybe it includes unfulfilled desire of motherhood. Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's financial struggle, betrayal, hurt, or disappointment. Maybe right now it's anxieties and concerns amid COVID-19 and all of the unknowns and changes that has been brought about in the last few weeks. When we can't control our circumstances, when our plans have unraveled right in front of us, we can still choose gratitude and we can still experience a peace that goes beyond understanding. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, give thanks in all circumstances. But how is that even possible, especially when our circumstances are horrible? What fuels gratitude and peace in the seasons where life seems to be one discouragement or disappointment after another? Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. No matter what struggles or difficult seasons of life come, fixing our eyes and our hearts on him can help to calm the storms within us. Because he has overcome, there is a peace that goes beyond our immediate circumstances. We can find treasure in dark places and beauty even in the brokenness. Despite the intensity of my cancer journey with all of the unknowns, it solidified some deep, rich realizations of the things that really matter in life. When everything else is stripped away, it's our relationship with God and with others that really matters. When my calendar was cleared of normal routine, when my plans came to a standstill, I really learned to treasure the people in front of me and the moments that I had with them. It doesn't mean that I've gotten it all right since then. I certainly haven't but a difficult season grew a richer perspective. Most of us have had our sense of normal thrown into upheaval in the past few weeks. And while we would never choose these circumstances, the slower pace of life may reveal some deep, rich truth in our lives if we open our eyes to see. There is richness in the everyday mundane and beauty in every breath. Every load of laundry, every meal prepared, every hug, every emotional meltdown, Every act of kindness, and yes, even every tantrum, tells us that we are alive and present. We have been gifted with a responsibility that will send us to our knees and at times leave us drained and exhausted. But it will fill our lives with purpose and an unconditional love that can't really be described or understood. Think of the time when you held your children for the first time. Nothing can prepare you for the intensity of unconditional love you feel for this brand new tiny human. I remember feeling like for the first time it gave me a little glimpse of our Heavenly Father's love towards us. We've done nothing to earn it, but it's huge and unconditional. On this Mother's Day, the greatest gift that any of us can have is that we can lay all of our failures, our fears, our questions, our hurts, and our disappointments at His feet and His grace covers us because He is a good Father and his love is bigger than we can imagine. Happy Mother's Day. Just where we go and help us to be wise in times when we don't know. Let this be our prayer when we lose our way. Your grace to
I hope that today's show has been a blessing to you. Our mothers deserve so much more credit and honor that we could possibly give them in one day of the year. I want to thank today's guests, Noah Hamilton, C.N. Heath, Lynette Butt, Megan Canning, and Alyssa Gillingham. We appreciate all of you for making the show a very memorable one. I encourage you to let your mother know how much she means to you today. We understand that many of you may not have your mother in your life and today can actually be a difficult time. We pray that you'll find comfort in Jesus. Whatever your situation is today, we hope that your day is filled with treasured memories. Until next time, I'm Mike Freak and thanks for watching.